Welcome to the JDSU HST3000 Handheld Services Tester Learning Series. The HST3000 is a rugged, handheld, portable testing tool for technicians and engineers who install and maintain triple play telecommunication services, such as voice, data, and video over twisted pair of copper wires. As you'll see, the HST3000 provides complete wideband and narrowband copper testing services, plus network testing and application testing capability. In this session, I'll provide a brief introduction of the HST3000, and I'll make you aware of some of its testing capability. And I'll talk about some of the modules and software options that are available on the unit. In later sections, we'll get into more detail, and I can't wait to get in some of the actual testing also in future sessions. HST3000 is multiple layer testing capability. That means it can test not only the physical plant to qualify or troubleshoot the copper pairs, but it can also test the network technology and the actual service, the actual triple play voice, video, or data content being delivered to the customer. The HST tests the circuit. With the HST, you can identify copper impairments and troubleshoot the local loop for faults and conditions that will degrade service, and identifying all the usual culprits like shorts, grounds, opens, crosses, bridge taps, wet sections, and other high resistive faults. You can use it to identify pair imbalance and power influence issues, and you can also use it to troubleshoot wideband impairments up to the VDSL2 range, about 30 megahertz with specific noise filters for VDSL to up to 30 megahertz. Also available, you'll find a graphical TDR, or time domain reflectometer, and a resistive fault locator, or an RFL meter, to pinpoint and repair troubles prior to installing the circuit. Rounding out the copper feature set is JDSU's own Copper Expert, a one-button automated test that runs a series of copper tests and then provides an indication of what the copper trouble is. The HST also tests the network with field upgradable modules and software that tests single or bonded pair ADSL2 plus and VDSL2 or uh, with a, a true bonded VDSL2 or ADSL2 plus modem, which brings up both pairs simultaneously to measure performance in the presence of things like uh, crosstalk and noise. Plus, there are modules that you can also use to test. Uh, T1 or HDSL, E1, basic rate or primary rate ISDN, DS3, Ethernet, IP version 4, IP version 6. There's, there's lots of modules that are available. Now to make sure that the customer gets the highest quality of experience, the HST also tests the service. The HST can be equipped not only to perform tests like data throughput or speed checks. It can also emulate voice over IP butt set and test video with both IP TV and Microsoft Media Room environments. Also, a class of service test suite lets you check out what the customer is experiencing on a trouble call and be sure that the service performs as expected at the customer site by simultaneously bringing up internet data traffic or voice over IP or video streams and measuring performance. Plus, you'll want to remember that any test run in a manual mode on the HST can also be run and developed into interactive or automated test suite that can be set up according to your own specific testing methods and procedures. Really, it's much more than a regular test macro. JDSU can actually build in logic that make it uh, interpretive decisions based on things like your test location or even your measured results. Now there are two basic types of HST mainframes that I want to make you aware of. Although they may look very similar from the outside, inside they're a little bit different. You want to make sure you have the one you're supposed to do uh, to have uh, to do your job. Now one type is primarily used for those of you who don't have copper testing responsibilities and test DSL sync or T1, E1, uh, DS3, Ethernet, but not copper. That unit does not have an internal board that lets you test copper. The other type of, of mainframe is for those of you who do perform copper tests or are expected to, such as those of you who need to qualify pairs before putting them into service or install service to the customer or perform copper loop troubleshooting to identify and then clear copper impairments 
like a bridge tap. By the way, you can also use your uh, mainframe, either mainframe, whether copper enabled or not, to do your DSL sync, T1 HDSL, Ethernet, etc. They all work with uh, either, either mainframe. Now you can check the type of unit that you have by turning on the unit, and I'll show you how to do that in a session uh, coming up called Checking Firmware and Installed Options. You can also check by taking off the battery, which is located in the back of the unit with the screen facing away from you, and then looking at the label on the mainframe underneath the battery. Look at the bottom of the label. If your unit is equipped for copper testing, there will be a little mark next to either color or black and white, followed by the words copper testing, and then followed by a little C in parentheses. If the mark is just next to color or black and white without the words copper testing following it, it won't be able to test copper. The HST 3000 is built to withstand harsh weather conditions. It's built for the outside plant, and it will test where you need it to test. It'll go where you need it to go. Don't worry about it. It's also got a long life battery that will last all day. You can also get different test modules or service interface modules or SIMs to test the technologies you need. Many of the SIMs even have several test interfaces on them as well, like dual tip ring and ground or ABE connectors for a copper test and ADSL or VDSL jack on the side. So for most jobs, you'll rarely, really if ever, have to swap modules. You can even perform the service test, you know, the video test or the IP phone or browse the web without any changes in modules. However, if you have a different job type uh, during the day, say like where you have to test VDSL in the morning and then switch to T1 or E1 in the evening, then you will have to switch modules. The HST software options can also be enabled remotely, so there's really no need to send it in if, uh, if you want to add a feature. JDSU also provides firmware releases every so often with new features that come standard in every release. We'll get into some of those in later sections. Well, that's about all. In this section, we covered the HST 3000 and how it can test and qualify the wideband copper circuit for broadband triple play services. Plus, you can test the network, the XDSL or T1, DS3, Ethernet, and then test the service, the actual IP voice, video, or data content being provided to the customer. We also went over how to identify the two types of mainframes, either copper or non-copper and then some of the SIMs and some of the available software options. Next time we'll briefly cover changing SIMs and then cover all the connections on the outside of the unit. Later on we'll get into some of the actual testing features. That'll be fun. Can't wait. See you soon. Thanks for your time.